Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. I want to start this tonight with a question. What are you sitting for? 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 Zen practice in general involves some degree of seated meditation. No matter if it's Korean, Vietnamese, Japanese, Chinese, American, German, wherever, there's going to be some involvement in meditation. I have a story for you, and this may involve me doing my di uh, dialogue where I shift from one persona to the other, depending on which way I learn, lean. So there's an old monk, and he is walking down the path, just chewing an apple one day. And he looks up and there is one of his students and he's sitting precariously on this really, really jagged looking rock. And so the master says to him, young student, why are you sitting on that rock? And the young student said, I'm sitting on the rock to become Buddha. And then the old monk said, okay, have I not told you about Matsu and his teacher, Nanue Huairang, when Matsu was sitting there as a young student. He gave the same response. I'm sitting to become Buddha. And Nanwei Wairang picked up a brick and started polishing it. Matsu said, so what, what are you doing? Why are you polishing that brick? And Nanwei responded with, I'm polishing it to turn it into a mirror. And Matsu said, you can't polish a brick and turn it into a mirror. And Nanwei responded with, nor can you sit your way into becoming Buddha. So, There are a number of times throughout history that uh, the question, what is Buddha, has come up. And that's probably something we should investigate also as to what is Buddha. But for tonight, we're sticking with what are you sitting for? So someone asked um, Wumen, what is Buddha? And his response was, dried shit on a stick. And someone asked Dongshan, what is Buddha? And his response was, three pounds of flax. So what is Buddha? Are we sitting to become Buddha? The old master said that the student was probably missing the point, thinking that he could just meditate his way into becoming Buddha. But if you want to stay there, keep meditating. It won't do you any harm. So at one point, the young student is sitting on his rather uncomfortable, jaggedy rock. 
and he fell off his rock and he had a great awakening. So why do we sit? Dogen had the quandary about, well, if we're already Buddha, i.e. we have Buddha nature, then why bother practicing? There are different levels of involvement in practice, in the, in the practice of seated meditation. Some people will start out, um, you know, sitting on the cushion and they'll have their eyes like half closed and their hands in the cosmic mudra, as it's sometimes called. And we sit and we follow the breath. Some people count one to 10 on the inhales and exhales, like one out, two inhale, three exhale, and so on. And then you go up to 10 and you start over again. And when you find that you've gone up to 15, you say, oh, I guess I wasn't paying attention. So I better pay attention. And you start over at one and you do it without any actual judgment of yourself because it's not that you did a bad thing. You're just observing the things that you do. And sometimes our minds wander. Even people who do mindfulness meditation probably find out at some point or another that they're being less than mindful. What's for dinner tonight? Oh, traffic is going to be so awful driving home. Boy, if I had only thought of that when we were having that argument, that would have gotten him. If I'd only said that, damn. When we find ourselves doing these things, we go back to the breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And then at some point or another, the timekeeper will hit the chukbi in our case, and then we will do something else. Sometimes it's walking meditation. Sometimes it's a Dharma talk. Uh, it could be any number of things. It could be chanting, which we'll do some later. We, part of our practice is the, uh, the threefold practice, which is sila, samadhi, and prajna, or morals, i.e. following the precepts. Concentration and wisdom. And although we have inherently, innately, our essence is of Buddha nature, we need to cultivate that Buddha nature. I always say, if you want to be what a Buddha is, do what a Buddha does. But we watch ourselves, we cultivate our practice through watching what we do, what thoughts come and go while we meditate. We eventually, after some time of practice, can notice our thoughts and actions as we're not on the cushion. It's not a thing that happens immediately. You can't just sit on a cushion and immediately exhibit your Buddha nature. We cultivate our practice, even though we're already awakened, we cultivate it so that we don't backslide into greed, anger, and delusion. 
the three poisons. We practice the precepts. We cultivate our samadhi, our concentration. And we also cultivate our innate wisdom, our prajna. So I guess the question comes back to what are you sitting for? What are you sitting for? And even if you don't know the answer, or you've heard that the answer isn't to become Buddha, you can always rely on the fact that you're sitting for the benefit of all beings. <laughs>